Okay, this is a uh, Max Vision uh, fully multi coated 82 degrees 24 millimeter uh, eyepiece. If I remove the lens uh, cap, see the size of the eyepiece. Quite impressive. And if you look at the other side of it, this is almost like a telescope itself. Okay, I'll put now the dust caps of this one back and I will look at the other eyepiece. Okay, I'll put the Pepsi back for the scale and this is the second eyepiece. Let's just see. This is a Max Vision a fully multi coated 68, 68 degrees 34 millimeter. That's even wider angle than that other one. And I'm telling you, this is made of steel. It's heavy. It's heavy. Quite heavy. Chunky. Okay, I'll remove the dust caps and show you the rest of it. The lens of this one, the front lens, is quite huge. Look, such a wide view. I've never seen an <laughs> eyepiece like that. As you can see, even the best microscopes don't have that eyepiece. It's massive the eyepiece. And this is the side that you look actually. But this is the side that looks goes through the tube of the telescope. That is the best eyepiece I've ever seen. This is for the Mount Palomar. <laughs> That's for the Keck telescope. If they use visual uh, for visual thing other than camera and CCDs. Okay, I'll put that one back now and we go now to another eyepiece. This is a Hyperion 10 millimeter modular eyepiece Phantom coating group As you see compared to the can of drink is the size of the can of drink And I have to remove the caps and you can see This eyepiece is, is uh, of course, 1.4, but you can remove this and make it to 2 inch. And this is the other side of it. And this, it gives a high magnification, but narrower field of view. So these are the three eyepieces that I bought from, the, from my telescope. Amazing sets of eyepieces. And as you can see, they're amazing. And also this is a, a yeah, mask for blocking the stray lights uh, from entering your field of view when you're looking through this. This one, which is the widest angle one, is excellent for the wearers of the glasses. You don't need anything. You just remove the, you don't need to remove your glasses if you're a wearer of glasses. But if you are not using glasses, that gives you a whole new world to look into. Overall, I'm really delighted with this purchase. Each one of these is uh, around 200 pounds, I think, of these eyepieces. And I got them all three for 150. Number one. Even the 21st century, that this is an eyepiece design, Huygenian. Christian Huygens probably invented it in the 17th century, the same century that the telescope was invented by Italians and the Dutch and everybody else, it seems. This is the box of it, and compare it with the box of this Max Vision. So, not 
Okay, now let's put our Japanese treasure high piece beside our uh, Chinese high piece, which made in China for the meat company by uh, Export Scientific China, which is a Chinese company owned by China. Uh, meat cancelled it. And uh, the order was around since 2012 or 13 in the telescope markets. And uh, eventually, because this was selling one fourth of the price of the meat, meat discontinued it. All that this is really good airfoil design or kind of like a panel tick. But you see how the size compares to what you have. This is a, a 0 0.965. Uh, Japanese style 40 millimeter eyepiece, good I must say, for its own. And this is a Max Vision multi coated and 68 degrees 40 millimeter eyepiece. I have to remove the end cap so you can see proper reflection. So, this is our eyepieces. Okay, this is my uh, Meet LX200 EMC with the uh, Max Vision 40 millimeter 68 degrees field of view eyepiece. As you can see, it's quite substantial, and the telescope has taken it well. Uh, I think probably. This is because this one has a metal gears, hopefully, LX200. But I think the LX19 maybe not, cannot take this. I've not tested it, but I'm just guessing. I may be wrong, but anyway, we have it now here. And I will run a test when there is moon around, just to see how it will look with the moon. Clear skies permitting. But the whole setup looks sturdy enough to me. Okay, I've now installed my Max Vision uh, 68 degrees 34 millimeter uh, eyepiece. It has a very wide uh, viewing angle. I was really impressed with the image quality on this one. I'm holding the camera. I'm looking forward. That shows the difference between a cheap eyepiece and a good quality eyepiece. I think I will use the Max Vision with this. It goes better, it gives a better result. It looks heavier, adds at least <laughs> half a kilo to the weight. But what the heck, that's a good, good, good telescope, needs good eyepiece. The telescope is as, is as good as his eyepiece, and mount, and optical, and collimation, and everything else. <laughs> Is a mad hobby. <laughs> okay, uh, I just have the M42 in the field of view of this uh, uh, Skywatcher Max Vision um, uh, 150 Maxotov using the Max Vision uh, 68 degree 34 um, millimeter eyepiece. 
view is excellent, first class. I can easily split the trapezium in the heart of the M42. At the same time, I just want to tell you that the difference between this Max Vision uh, and uh, this IPS LET, which came with the Skywatcher telescope, is between splitting the trapezium, clearly seeing it pinpoint stars and not seeing it at all or seeing something more like a, a lump of uh, fuzzy um, light I can say look look at the outward position I put the telescope mount this is the Opsonium one from the Heritage 130 and this is rock solid I put it in a very awkward position. I've tapped it, did everything to it. No, not much uh, shaking on the image. I cannot show it because this camera is not very sensitive to show the dim light of the tele of the um, M42. But that is amazing. I'm surprised how clear and how stable is this mount for this Maxitov telescope. And when I was looking to, to the Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, of course not in the space. And this was tr because it was very low from the British Isle. Uh, it was passing through the, the light of it was passing through the branches of the trees. It was like a batting of disc. And as a batting of disc, <laughs> you can use it for focusing. And I exactly used that for this purpose. It was like a batting of disc. I could see the patterns of the star changing according when I reached the focus or went a little bit out of the focus and then back into the focus. That was amazing. And I can say this is a beautiful, you can use it for visual astronomy, um, the Maxitov one, with this eyepiece, wide-angle eyepiece. I'm in later because this, this version can use the corrector reducer for the uh, schmidt cassegrain greens. I may just use this for here before the optical train here in the between the mirror and the optical train and uh, see if I can actually make the camera more wide angle than what it is we will see if I can do that I may not be able it may not work but let, let's hope I love this Max Vision Apices they give such a lovely view one of the best for observing the Orion Nebula itself and the trapezium is this 24 uh, degrees uh, 24 millimeter one. I wish I had a 22 or 20 millimeter one. I have not seen it yet. Uh, Explore Scientific is the same, but uh, it doesn't have that good, nice feeling of this rubber uh, holding thing. And the size of the glass is enormous. Anyway. It's such a beautiful thing when you look at it. Trapezium in all of them are sharp, edge to edge. This moment I'm looking around the star Al Nitak in the Orion constellation. is one of the la is the last one uh, in the three stars of the belt of Orion. And a little bit down toward the south, I see a lot of nebulosity. This is the Max Vision. A 28 mm, 24 millimeter eyepiece, and I'm using the uh, a two inch. Of course, this is a two inch eyepiece, and I'm using a two inch ultra high contrast uh, filter. I see a lot of new nebulosity. This is an eight inch uh, LX 200, a classic one. The sky is not very. Uh, yeah, it's quite dark actually. You are not quite dark, and the clouds have cleared. I see a lot of nebulosity, a lot of nebulosity, a lot of dark streaks. Which one of them is the horsehead nebula? It's not very clear because uh, what I'm doing, uh, I should show you. I'm using this cover to put over my head, so I clearly get it back that. And. Uh, after adaptation of my eye, I can see a lot of nebulosity, especially with averted vision, they're very visible. What is funny is that in those nebulosity, I see a lot of dark streaks. 
it's not one it's more than probably six maybe uh, darker streaks I see around they're scattered all over the place it's easy to see actually actually around the Al Nitak to see itself the nebula there uh, which is a flame nebula is that that is definitely easy it's easy so you don't need even dark adaptation for seeing that I may be exceptional I have a probably exceptional eye vision thanks God but the Horsehead Nebula, I've heard that is very difficult. You need at least 11 inch to telescope to see that. And this 8 inch I can see it with the help of the ultra high contrast. And I, as I told, I'm putting a shroud over my head. So um, I will be completely dark adapted. And as you can see, I'm also using for this video, I'm using a, a red torch, which is on my head actually. And so it's a very exceptional seeing and I really like this Max Visions. I think Max Visions are the best eyepieces I've ever had and they are not expensive. And they are the best uh, for the price and comparable or even better than the ones that they tell of you, Nagler and Ethos and others sell. So. Fun of you, and I really am enjoying this. Visual astronomy is definitely a good way of better understanding because I've seen a lot of overexposed. Actually, I was looking on the on the eyepiece and comparing with what I can see in the mobile phone pictures. The images that you see, I should say, actually images. The images you see are overexposed. The stars are not what you see actually in this. Of course, they're reverse in the Schmidt Cassegrain. Green the reverse. But again, they are not ex they are not what you will see in the eyepiece. The stars in the images you see are overexposed, they're big, huge. What you see uh, in the real world is different. They're more like a drawing. If you want to draw it, you have to draw it more carefully. Of course, drawing with different telescopes give you different views. That's the problem. So you have to make your own drawing. And I'm going to actually gradually go toward the visual observation drawing.